Daryl, episode nine, uh, where John and I talk about back the behind the scenes of consulting, a little bit about Cask. We hang out with friends, and we like to try to solve some of the problems that you run into. Uh, today's episode, we're gonna talk about the Now CLI. Um, kind of walk you through setting that up because it may be a little challenging for people that haven't used Node before. And we're also so, so thankful to have a special guest. Uh, Ashley is on our call today. Um, Ashley is a developer MVP. She writes tons of blog posts on AshleySN.com that kind of dive you into if you're an admin or a developer. And she does a lot of the hard work of finding all the problems that uh, you'll run into. So we're really, really happy that Ashley could join us today. Awesome. Thank you, Dorian. Um, yep, yeah, I'm Ashley Snyder. Um, I'm a senior ServiceNow developer at Virginia Tech. Um, I've been working on ServiceNow for about five years now, a little over five years, um, in all different areas like ITSM, CSM, platform development, all that. Um, and I, you know, I really enjoy doing my blog. A lot of it is just me trying to figure out stuff, like you said, or I can't find stuff in the documentation. I'm like, well. If I can't find it, it's not there. So let me write this down. So I really enjoyed doing it and sharing it with the community. And I'm excited to be on this podcast with you guys today. Cool. Yeah, awesome. John, John and I like to ask embarrassing questions um, sometimes, but uh, this one won't be embarrassing. But so if you were on vacation right now and we could do this podcast anywhere, where would we be? Oh, man. Um, I'd have to say the Bahamas. I know it's like a, a cliche spot, but not being able to really go anywhere last year, I just want to be underneath like an umbrella in the sand. Yeah. Is it too early for mojitos? <laughs> <laughs> it's, cool. it's five o'clock somewhere, Dorian. <laughs> five o'clock somewhere. Yes. Um, awesome. So let's let's kind of just dive into it. Um, if John wants to share his screen and pray I get my transition correct. Uh, what do you want me to share? A terminal or a, a browser? What do we have? Let, uh, let's start with the browser because I think we'll go to the store to show people about the binary first. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Here we are. Where are we after or where are we going? Uh, so let's type in like service now, CLI, and then maybe store. I don't know at the end of it. And eh, so that sure we'll just find it from the store. Yeah. So for for people that don't know, um, service now has two different ways you can download their their CLI. And you may be asking, you know what's the CLI for? Um, so the the command line interface is normally, uh, in, in this case right now, used for either building components in agent workspace or building components in, in UI builder. So, and am I missing anything, Ashley? Those are kind of the two main uh, cases. You're right. You cool. Can put them either or. Um, and, and so essentially if you compare to the previous versions of ServiceNow, if you wanted to build something, you know, custom in the in, in the portal, you would use their, you know, interface that was in in ServiceNow. Um, ServiceNow has taken that out in order to kind of use some of the best features of the Node um, and ServiceNow platform, and so that's why they've created this command line interface. Um, allows you to use like your Visual Studio Code, and then you know build and deploy your um, your component from from your computer. So uh, for those that don't know, here's where you would download your ServiceNow CLI. It's just a binary that'll you know go through some installation process. Um, so if it'll come in a zip file that John will magically have on his computer, or download it for us. Uh, I think I have it downloaded. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Um, you do need an account. So if you don't have a ServiceNow developer account, you will need one in order to download this one. Um, so we'll kind of, we'll kind of walk through if you ha have you installed it yet, John, or do you already have it? Uh, no, I have not. Um, I can, cool. I can share that if you want. Yeah. So it should come in a zip file and then there should be three different ones, a Linux, a Windows and a Mac. So if you just want to 
to double click the Mac one and then. Yeah, uh, yeah, I will. It just doesn't. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't like it because it's not signed. No. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah. that is something. That's that's something you have to get around is if you're on a Mac, um, allowing Gatekeeper to get through that. I don't know about Windows, but yeah. yeah. Let me let me close some things, um, and I'll just share my screen since it'll be, or I'll share my whole desktop since it'll be so much easier cool. than trying to do yeah. this some other I know way. I do remember you have to go to security. And, so once you open it the first time, you can then go to security and privacy um, using like Spotlight or into your system preferences. And then there will be a button there that says open anyways. Um, so or you can hold down, what is it? So I have a Windows keyboard on my Mac, but if you hold down, I think the left control and um, click on it, you can get an open. Uh, let me change my share here. All right, we'll move me or our pictures up. All right, so I, I got it to where it'll let me open it. Um, and we'll see what it does, if it actually comes up or not. Maybe it won't. I would go to security and preferences. <laughs> Or it's trying to do something. I don't know. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> cool. Click next. You obviously sell your soul. And... Uh, let me let me speed through this. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. Yeah. Cool. And we want to so, go applications. It's probably yeah. a good spot. And you definitely so I... want to add to path. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I agree. Oh, look at that. So quick. Wow. Congratulations. So you want to open up terminal now and and type in SNC. Hey, it worked. So that is way easier than the CLI one <laughs> from NPM. Yeah. But right. <laughs> since since we want to break John's computer, should we try to install the the uh, the ServiceNow CLI one as well? Uh, we can. I think I'm, I might already have it installed. I don't know, but we can go through it. Well, so let's give a couple pro tips here. Um, so there are some prereqs here. You do need Node. Um, so I'm not one to install Node like just out of the gate because you'll notice that you'll constantly have to keep it updated and having multiple versions of Node if you ever needed to test something in like Node 10 versus 12 versus 14 is a pain in the butt. So we're not gonna install it this way, um, uh, John. So the one that I like to use is called NVM. It's called Node Version Manager. So if you wanna type that into Google, um, you can, it'll bring you to like a GitHub page that you just have a bash command. Um, and it should be, yeah, like you can click on that one. It should bring us to a GitHub page. And yeah, awesome. So then scroll down here, and there should be about installing in the README, and it should just be a one liner. So, yeah, that curl command. Uh, you want all of it, including that, because it'll pipe it to bash. The first one would just install. So NVM is, if you've ever used NPM, which we will use here, um, is for Node Package Manager. This is just Node Version Manager. So what's nice, this will um, install NVM, and it should put it in your, your Bash RC or your ZSH RC um, if you have it. So you should be able to type NVM to make sure that it it caught itself. What did you say, in what? NVM, it stands for Node Version Manager. Yeah, enter. So it didn't find it, right? So can you um, cat your, uh, or actually, sorry, it just says you need to close and open it. So like restart terminal. And try NVM again. Oh, um, can you cat your uh, bash RC file? Or sorry, no. you're using ZSH, right? Uh, are you using bash, you're using bash, okay. Can you uh, can you cat 
Uh, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to walk me through. Yeah, it. I got you. I got you. Uh, tilde. Dot. Slash. Bash RC. Uh, one word. No. Oh, sorry. Uh, mix. I mix. I mixed the period and the slash. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, it's in there. Um, can you can you type in source and then that same path again? The bash RC. Uh, you want the tilde? Yeah, the tilde. That just goes to your 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 home folder. Yep. I seem to remember something about that way back when I was using Linux, but. And try NPM again. Yeah. All right. Cool. So NVM now um, is essentially just your your version manager, um, and so what we want to install is probably the latest version of LTS. So the most common command I use, which shows under these examples, is NVM install dash dash LTS. What was the last Pete? LTS. Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah. LTS. Yep. And Doran, cool. just so for the, people who may not know or not work with this a lot, what does LTS stand for? Uh, Long-term support. So uh, this is installing, you know, LTS version 14. So every two versions of Node is their long-term support. So they're actually probably on 15 by now, but the long-term support is uh, on even numbers. So until they get to 16, you, you would want to stay on this. And so now what you can type is, uh, so what's, a, what's probably cool is if you typed in node spa uh, space dash dash version, it's probably not gonna be 14.17.1. Oh, it is, okay, so you were already using it. But um, what you would do after this is type nvm uh, use and then dash dash LTS. Uh, oh, sorry, nvm, nvm use dash dash LTS. So, so now this means it's switched to that version. So currently, if you do anything right now, you're using that version. What's nice is if you ever needed to install, so like, let's say ServiceNow comes out with some, uh, the ability to use something that's only in 16 instead of 14, you could then, instead of trying to uninstall 14 and reinstalling you know, 16, you could just NVM you know, install you know, version 16 and then switch to it. So that's a really nice way to to get to to easily switch between node versions. Nice. Yeah. Um, cool. And so with that, it also installs npm, which it said when you when you're using it. So we're kind of ready to go to the next phase of just installing the the now CLI. So there's a couple couple ways. Service now tells you to install it as a global, um, and that's probably because they people just probably won't know how to use NPM or won't be used to it. I hate installing NPM modules as global, um, especially when they're massive ones that you don't even know all of the information about. Um, so what I normally like to do is install it inside of a folder. Um, so if, if John, you wanna kinda create our first, where our test project's gonna be. Um, so you can name this like, you know, first component or something like make a directory MK, MKDIR, and then create a directory. Nice. And let's CD into it. Cool. So ServiceNow would tell you we first need to now create a project. Um, this is now going to be our project, but um, for us getting the um, the the CLI installed here, you can just do npm install um, service now uh, at, at the at sign service now slash CLI, and you need to install before it. Yep, and it's probably going to yell at us that we don't have. Nope, cool. NPM is going to handle installing it in this folder only. Um, and so what the difference here is if you install this globally, you'd be able to just on your terminal, like on command line, type in um, 
I don't actually know. Is it ServiceNow, CLI, or is it... I don't actually know what the command is. What? You don't know? I don't to install it or to use it? Because it changed. To, 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 to use it. Um, yeah. So, like, well, well, uh, the Quebec command start with S and C, but the previous commands started with now, like CLI. Okay, now CLI, cool. Yeah, because so that when you still install from npm, it should be now CLI still, um, and so it just oh, didn't blow up on us. We're still good. All right, yay, exciting, um, or not exciting. It came out with an error. Created no such file. Okay, yeah. So, can you type in a ls for us? Like that should have. Okay, so it didn't actually work because the reason it didn't work for us is um, we can you type in npm in it? Sorry, <laughs> we probably should have instantiated a, a, a space in it, which will instantiate this folder. Yeah. Um, okay, just press enter a bunch of times. Totally fine. This is gonna get over in anyway, so. Nice. Yep. And then now run that uh, CLI command again. Yeah, that one. So look at all this fun we're doing with NPM. Hey. Yeah, see this is, as someone who has touched Linux in a, you know, a long time ago, this is the kind of stuff that messes me up when I go to try to play with it, is like, I'll get stuck and be like, where's where's the answers somewhere in the documentation where there are none and i'm like well i guess i'll do it later because <laughs> you I, know you get stuck and you're just stuck you know you gotta either go jump on um sn devs and hope somebody can answer your question or you find a dorian out there or an ashley and say hey i am stuck how do i get through for me when i first started i was on a 2014 uh, MacBook Pro that of course I had done all kinds of things to in the last six years, who knows? And uh, just error after error, you know, I had to change permissions, like all this stuff that I had to like work through on the community and Google different errors and stuff. I can say on like newer computers, if you haven't messed around with them a lot, it is a lot easier. But for me, like, yeah, I went through that whole experience the first time doing it. It took me days just trying to figure out how yeah. to get it installed on that computer. Yeah, so I just slacked you, John, because the error we're getting now is you don't have Xcode installed. <laughs> so, oh, no. yeah. So you're going to need to install that. Um, this is a one time thing, but if people are trying to use the CLI this way, they're going to get it. And it should have popped up something on your screen, which you'll have to accept. So, uh, well, it said I've already got. Uh... Oh. So, yep, I got you. So what we're going to have to do there is run this update? command. There isn't an update. It's only a remove. So, oh. so go with that one. <laughs> Pretty Sudo. Cheap, all these commands. Oh, it's, uh, our magic, it's our magic oven. <laughs> Just like on the cooking shows. Oh, no. Uh, on those cooking shows where they were like, oh, we'll put this in the oven, and then magically it's it's done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mo most of the time, NPM's decently good at, and now run that install one, decently good at telling you what the error was. You just need to find it. Um, and in this case, if you went up a little bit in his logs, it said like no, um, no Xcode detected. And pretty much what it means, it's like no modern version of it. Um, it's not going to take six hours, but um, in the meantime, I think we'll we'll switch back to um, the SNC one because there's still some setup. If I'm uh, I'm not mistaken, that you have to like connect it to a instance before you can actually use it. Is that right, Ashley? Yeah, you do. And do you know if like you can just fake it? Like you can just put any URL in there because like do we do we actually need it connected? You know, every time I've tried it. I've gotten some kind of error if my instance wasn't, you know, up and running. Because um, oh, you do have to authenticate with your username and password. 
Oh, so that's, that's how I've done it to kind of reduce errors is just make sure I have my instance logged in first. But I'd be interested to know. Okay. So we'll we'll try a fake URL first, but we'll make sure his instance is up. <laughs> oh, great. You don't have one. That's It's even better um, because it'll be really fast to get up. Yeah, faster than waking up, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> So it looks like it installed Xcode, so we can, while that's going, we can switch back to your terminal. Oh, not no, quite. it didn't. Almost, oh gosh, almost. So close. It's not, my my Mac's not that fast. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. We're, we'll probably run into some more errors anyways for the CLI. I'm glad that they went the binary route. I think that's gonna help people a lot. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm excited that you're gonna have to change your admin password on this at some point. <laughs> yeah. As soon as I log in, it'll go. Hey, change that. No, it won't. I do like I do like how they they've updated it, so you don't have to remember. Like it just opens it with the password anymore. That is nice. Yes, I'm, I'm definitely. But so I, I don't actually have to change it. Well, now someone else can log in with it, right? Because you just yeah. <laughs> broadcasted it. Um, cool. So. <laughs> So let's go to the uh, back to your command line now that that's up. You'll need that URL at some point. Um, so did it finish? Did it actually finish? Here, let's no, move this over right. here. Cool. Yeah, so let's type in SNC again just while we wait. Um, and I think it is the, I don't, I don't remember. Uh, con configure? You're looking for the command? Yeah, what's the command to... Because if we did the UI component, it's going to yell at us. So I don't want to... Just try um, configure. Oh, configure set, right? Configure space and then set. Yeah, or either configure profile set. Ooh, I like the word profile. Let's do profile. Like that? Yeah. Uh, let's see. So now it wants yeah. a host. Yeah. yeah, you're good. You get it. That's where you put in that one. Well, let's put a fake one in first. Uh, just type in a random dev one. Dot service now. And, and the only reason, oh, well, that's not a valid URL. Or that put a dot before the inside the barrel. Yeah, that. Like make it like an actual looking. Oh, Ugh. okay. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> I was just gonna say just change the URL, but uh, that this works. Yeah, make sure you get that HTTPS um, in there as well, or it will yell at you. You can't just start with the the name. Cool. Try enter. Basic. And then foobar. And Fubar. Uh, ooh, um, probably JSON. I like yeah, normal, but that's what I did on my. I, I'm sure there's reasons why you use the other ones, but I'm so it's collecting. A, it's it's okay. So it does not that, like fake URLs. That that's okay though, because what we want to try is the UI component part, right? Oh. So so SNC UI dash component which i think it doesn't always isn't always on right like you'd have to install that sometimes yeah so i found that it's like its own extension that you have to install first before you can use it so i'm assuming they may be adding on to this later because i know in yeah. the now cli it just came packaged you could just go ahead and do what you needed to do okay and so um i'm just quickly looking to see how someone would install that one um, so we can okay so normally what you would do since I think you've already done this John is SNC space extension space add space dash dash name space UI dash component wait wait <laughs> SNC <laughs> extension add what uh, uh, you overflowed my buffer <laughs> magic oven <laughs> Oh, I I have hot corners, <laughs> and so when I switch screens, 
All right, here we go. Yep. So if, if it isn't installed, like if you don't see it when you typed in SNC on available commands, you have to do it this way. Um, mm -hmm. Which is interesting because behind the scenes, it's just installing an NPM package. <laughs> so uh, very unique design they chose. And X, Xcode took way longer for you than it did for me. I told you, I don't have a speedy Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Not one of those i9s anyways, <laughs> or yeah, M1s. Yeah. You should bring it up with your employer. <laughs> Ugh, right? <laughs> uh, hey, okay. maybe maybe we can do something like if we get like a thousand subscribers, they'll buy me a new Mac. Ooh, <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> maybe they'll just give me a new Mac. Cause <laughs> um, cool. So now that the SNC component is installed, um, if you typed in SNC, it should just show up on your available commands. Cool. And so you'll see that it's there. Awesome. So I'm sending you some more oven code that I just got from the docs. Um, and you can't just press enter on this one, but it'll at least outline, you know, what we're trying to do. So essentially, imagine you're in the world where you have your environment is set up correctly. Um, it is set up correctly if you're just using the binary. In our case, we are also trying to use the, the now CLI, so it's a little bit different. Um, but the first command that you'd want to run is after you make a directory and you cc or you cd into it uh, you would want to create your project uh, ooh, yay it's done um so these this is the command for the project creation um a couple things about here i normally like to keep the offline tag there so and which is weird why you would need to connect to a host um so we're going to test to actually see if that works the only thing that is required is the name I'm pretty sure. Um, and so you, for the name, it's actually a NPM package name. So you would normally want to do like an at your company slash the name of your component. Um, does that make sense, Ashley? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think they give at my org slash movie quotes as like a example. Yeah. And, and that's because in theory you can publish this to NPM and other people can use it. And so there's a lot of them that ServiceNow has already published that allows you to pull in one of their components and use it as a subcomponent within yours. So that's kind of the, the thinking behind that. So we're gonna see if this works with our invalid host. Dang. <laughs> so. So yeah, so this is the reason I didn't actually like the binary. I don't like the idea that I actually have to connect to something before I can start building my component, like if I wanted to test locally. Um, it kind of breaks one of those principles that you should be able to work completely offline, um, but uh, that's okay. We did install Xcode now, so we're gonna try running that NPM command one more time, John, um, and see if we could get that working for people. There you go. This one? Yeah. Because I do know for a fact on this one, you could actually get everything up and running locally without connecting to a, an instance, which is kind of nice. So we're going to pray we don't get an exit one, John. Because NPM's going to love us. What was the first language you learned in college, John? <laughs> well, in college? Oh, I don't know. Probably the... um, classic ASP, maybe, before mm -hmm. ASP.net. <laughs> I, got, I got the goosebumps just hearing that. <laughs> but then I, I actually went professional with PHP, so. Oh, that, in fact, that I is... even went to I went to a uh, 
an expo in San Francisco, a PHP, what was it? PHP's big uh, conference. conference back in like um, early 2000s somewhere. Wow. So. I think I was still a kid at that time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool, <I'm> but <laughs> this actually succeeded. Look, we only got a warning that something's deprecated. That's yeah. beautiful. Um, Sweet. And... Um, the next thing we need to install is Kitar because we know that's going to give us an error if we don't have Kitar. So npm install space Kitar. Also, I don't know why they didn't put that as a dev dependency, but I will, I will let you know that it would give us errors. So just install Kitar after this. So again, what we're trying to do here is just install it locally um, so that we can we could potentially just use it within our project or within this folder. So. It doesn't install this so that you use it globally. Um, but so if you, you did would, want to... Oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, so you would end up in doing these installs in any directory that you're going to build out of. Yeah, if you wanted to try to... If you wanted to keep this contained. If you, if you don't care that it installs it on your path and you just want to be able to call it from global, you just add that dash G at the end of it and then you would then get it as if it was a binary, essentially. Um, I got you. So if you do an ls now, and if you want to cat package.json for me, we probably should open Visual Studio Code soon, press enter. So you'll notice here that under your dependencies, it added the ServiceNow CLI and Kitar. Um, so that means that in this project, we have access to it. Um, now, what most people would think is they could just type in now the that now CLI command on NPM um, which I don't remember. Uh, so if you wanted to type in now dash CLI and then yep and press enter, this won't work, but or you installed it globally, so it will work. <laughs> Probably at some point I did. <laughs> um, that's totally fine. Um, what what I guess I would just show, if you are watching this and you don't have it installed globally, this won't work. It'll say command not found. What you need to do is actually add it yeah, to the script section of your NPM package. So what we're going to do is if you want to open in Visual Studio Code or use VI, what's probably easiest if you want to open this. folder <laughs> well you should have already created that folder right um sure yeah well it was already created so we should we should find the where you actually created it oh there should be a folder somewhere yeah, if you... I see what it. you're saying. Let's see. Where's that going to be? Probably at your... If you go to Terminal, you could type PWD, but um, it's probably under Users, and then it should be inside the barrel somewhere there. Yeah, there we go. Open that. my open <laughs> there we go don't you love that it defaults to icon list and not list I, I don't even know why there ever is an icon uh, well it should know you. what kind of directory you're in and just kind of go it's with the top list. one I think it's the top one John all the way at the top there we go cool awesome so let's go into that uh, package uh, package.json. So you'll notice here where it says scripts and it says test. So um, you're going to put a comma after that one and press enter. And then oh, like pretty much follow that same format. But we're going to name this like um, uh, now CLI or now. We can do now. And then 
pull in and then the command that it's going to run in this is going to be the now dash cli right so i'm gonna have to pull up docs and then like that that's all you would need for in this case um yeah so then save this done okay and now let's go back to your terminal so now if you type in npm run now it should run the cli from this directory yeah which it it, it worked it just didn't expect a, a a one error code right but notice here like this is again this is just an example if you don't want to install it globally how you could utilize it just within your project um, so if you're working on a a, a space and you and you want to keep it locally to this folder and not have it anywhere ac accessible outside of this folder, this is how you would do it. So I'd, we're going to stop there for the local stuff, but like I just wanted to make sure that somebody knows that you know this is one way of installing, installing the CLI from uh, locally. Um, we're going to use the global one in this case going forward, and we also showed the binary as well. So you have lots of different options to get lost in, and hopefully things work for you. <laughs> Um, cool. So, so let's go and use the, the now CLI to create that project. Um, since you have it globally, we're going to actually CD out of this folder and just create a new one. Um, just so we don't mess with any of that. I don't want to run into it. Oh. CD space dot dot. Yeah. And then make a new directory. CD into that one. Cool. So now if you type in now dash CLI, and, I don't actually, and then it was project, I think it was. And then, oh, I, I don't think you type dash dash project in this case. Another frustrating part is they didn't make their CLI the same as their binary. So very, <laughs> you, you really have to choose one or the other. Um, so project and then dash dash name and then name it and then dash dash offline uh, you'll need a slash after that at sign you can't just name it at the scope oh sorry not at the at, sorry after the scope name so in npm you you scope it with the at and then a name and then you you actually name this individual package Foobar, first component, yeah. whatever you want. I was going to say, don't get me caught up on trying to name stuff. That's a huge time <laughs> suck for me. <laughs> All right. Now, if you press enter, we're going to pray that this works. One dash. <laughs> nice. So again, the beauty of, uh, well, I think that offline is must include at least one dash. Oh, offline is double dash. Yeah, they're both double dash. Project, dash dash name. Well, it says there must be... Oh, after scope, so you have to include scope in this one. So let's include scope. Oh, where's that? Is that just yeah, another... Actually... Oh, okay, okay, I see. So we don't need that, but we do need... Yeah. No, no, that, that, that was the issue. I think that was the oh, issue. Oh, we don't need scope on it? No, I think I think it need must include at least yeah, I think inside the name you need that dash, yeah. Weird. Why? It's it's probably an NPM thing. Um but or it's a service now. Oh. oh no, scope must be defined. Uh, all right. Okay, Can we do closer. globals? Uh no. So you do dash dash scope and then Oh yeah, I think you could do global. Um but the the problem is is this is the custom scope that your your app's going to be named. So you can't use global in this case. It'd be like x underscore, you know, whatever. Yeah. This is only if you're working offline because it needs to know that application scope name. If you're logged in and creating a project um, with the binary or the now coi the install, it'll just create it for you automatically. Oh. Nice. Okay. 
So just underscore foobar that or, uh, well, I think you need one more, right? I think it's two underscores. Yeah, there you go. All right, and the good thing is, is you could change this after the fact. So before you deploy, when you're in offline mode. OMG. So that just created a bunch of things for us. <laughs> So on the left hand side, if you open that one now, remember that we created a new folder so that we didn't mess with that. Yep. So just go up one. Oh, oh. yeah. Well. That's okay. Yay. Awesome. So some important things here is uh, the now CLI JSON. So just kind of click on that. Um, Oh, I lied, not that one. The now UI. <laughs> JSON. So um, this is where, there's a couple things. This is where you can change that scope name that we just discussed If before you deploy. Um, it's the name of the component that you're creating, that foo-bar. And then in the inner component, if you ever wanted to pull in another component that is installed in your package JSON, um, you can use that inner components as well. Um, did I miss anything? Actually. I would say, like, definitely do this. Because you see where it says label my component. If you just deploy this up in UI Builder, you're going to see my component. So, like, you know, instead of seeing that 15 different times, just get in the habit of coming here and naming your component in this file. All right. So, so we'll name it John's component. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, and then um, are there other, I think that's the main thing. And then the package JSON is where um, if you if you were to install another component and they have a few of them here, right, like the, in those dependencies, like those are the out-of-the-box ones that they give. If you wanted to use any of those as an inner one, um, you would you would select it from there. Or you would, you would npm install it and then it would show up here. So... Yeah. Cool. So we have a component. Let's try to, to test this component, right? So um, I think it's like npm develop. It's been a while. Yeah. Hopefully you have nothing running. If you, oh, uh, sorry, mp, uh, sorry, uh, now CLI, now dash CLI develop. And I'm assuming you have nothing running on port 8080 or 8081, uh -huh. sorry. Not that I'm currently aware of. Cool. So, so if if you did have something running, um, those all look. Oh, we. So if you ran this, what essentially what happened is we didn't. After we created the project, we didn't run npm install. So if you want to run npm install, um, that will install all the node modules that you need. Yep. So I'm glad we're getting through those errors. Yeah, and so for the now CLI develop, it, it gives you a couple options to like provide like a port, um, if you want to default open a browser. Um, so it, it gives you a couple different uh, options. And I guess we can we can make that easier. So this is part of the reason why like installing stuff globally, <laughs> you just install so much on your computer that uh, it scares me that you know that's it, that's the one thing I'm not happy with Mac about is like you install stuff and it's just like where did it go? Like Windows, you can at least go to a directory and find it and be like, oh, here it all is. But Mac's just like, yeah, I'm just gonna put it places and you'll never know if if you find it. Yeah. Well, the good thing about applications, though, um, totally off topic. But if you went to your applications folder and you right clicked on an application and did. Um, show package contents it actually shows you all of the files that is related really? to that application yeah that's why when you delete that application it deletes everything related to that other than like path stuff but um so that is a a tip that if you ever wanted to reverse engineer something um you could go to package contents of your application and look at squiggly code forever <laughs> um all right, we're we're getting there. Look at look at this beautiful, all this thing you don't ever have to worry about. 
right? I, I love how verbose it is on like it'll tell you what's going on but the problem is is like fixing any of this is like uh, like out of this like re out of the scope of any developer should have to deal with um, and it's like a gift and a curse like if if you think of the java world where you'd have packages they would never really get updated so it would always once you compile it it would work and you wouldn't get a bunch of warnings the npm world and node moves so fast that like there's constantly uh, new packages and new updates for security reasons or for new features and they're rather than it just being one major monolith it's all of these little packages um, so it's it's a gift that you minimize dependencies and things but it's a, a curse because you deal with constantly things like this yeah. yeah so ashley virginia tech where is that located so that's out of blacksburg virginia but i'm actually working remotely out of raleigh north carolina oh okay because i used to live in virginia and florida so i've been up and down that east coast quite a bit when i was little yeah but i was up in yeah northern virginia by uh so i started in, we, we lived in winchester and then moved to reston so we were near DC. <laughs> Have you worked in edu you education like, you before? I like a few of my relatives with the, the draw, and I even get it out here. People would be like, you have a Southern draw. And I'm like, well, not nearly as bad as other people. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I did. I worked at um, the University of Texas at Austin. Actually, it was my first service now job. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, my first service now job was actually University of California, San Diego. So oh, I've I, I definitely come from education as well. Yeah, it's I, a really, it's a great way to like, you know, it is education, but like, it's a great way to learn like seriously because, you know, they may not have a lot of resources or stuff that you kind of just get thrown in and it's like feet to the fire kind of learning. Totally, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's always more work I found when you work in uh, education space. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> my, mine was a mortgage company that's where I cut my teeth on service now <laughs> so but I, I have done projects for a university and uh, so I, I, I have been in that space before in fact I built a, uh, a scanning app in the platform because they had a lot of uh, inventory they were trying to process or yeah. trim or you know efficient make make their process more efficient so i built them an app that they could just go in and scan stuff and it would add it, it would check to see if it already existed and you could add all kinds mm -hmm. of fun it was a good time that's cool that, that's a fun project oh my gosh we we're we're gonna get it it's success oh yay accessed only <laughs> twenty eight thousand vulnerabilities no big deal uh, <laughs> Uh, cool. So now you can type now dash CLI space develop, and we're going to add a couple options here. We're just going to add the dash dash open, which is just going to open your browser. Okay. So, yep, press enter. And if everything worked as promised, don't worry about those promises. That's not an actual error, just a warning. I think I think we're gonna get successful. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's already in use. Oh, so yeah. Some something's already running on eighty eighty one, uh, which could just be like a virus scanner or something like that. So we're gonna run the same command, but we're gonna change the port. So space dash dash port, and we're gonna do three thousand. Yeah. So like you guys can see like if you. If you think that you're just going to get on, like, the developer site and go through the component <laughs> course and start jumping in and creating, like, this is, I, I akin this to, like, you know, a really in-depth board game now, you know, you're going to spend a couple of hours reading the instructions first before you, you jump in and start doing things, so just kind of, like, mentally prepare yourself to, like, your first couple of hours is going to be the setup on this before you jump in and start doing components. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and that's where I think you're, we're gonna 
service now is going to lose people is in that couple of hours trying to get it to work because they're going to get frustrated and be like oh my gosh this why is it so complicated <laughs> yeah yeah so so it looked like it loaded our component though so we i know we only have a few more minutes so let's go and change the hello text to actually show um so if you go to your visual studio code if you go under source index uh, foobar yep so this is what's loading and nothing is in that div um, so I'm trying to think do we want to spend the time so I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of like what the heck is everything here um, so where, where it says the import that's where you're essentially um, importing other files um, from different parts of your application or from different parts of your node modules um, so that's what the imports are for. Um, definitely a JavaScript thing. Very similar to require if you're on older JavaScript. Uh, the view here is the actual thing that, that your component's going to return. So it's normally just a return of your HTML. Um, so it, it takes in a couple functions that allows you to, or a, a couple variables that allow you to manipulate things like your state and your updated state. Um, and then the bottom part is where you're actually creating your element and providing it the parameters it needs, um, which is creating your component with the, the correct parameters that it needs. There, the developer course does go into a lot more detail on what those are for, but those are your three different things that you'll ever need to, what, what you'll need to worry about for building your component. Um, there are ways to build functions as well after that, um, but for, for most of your use case, those are your three that you'll need. Yeah, I did want to mention too, like, you know, with the, the import and even um, in the view section. So ServiceNow on the developer site has a section for components. Um, and it will tell you how to install them if you want to use, let's say that you wanted to use a button in this. Um, it'll tell you how to install them. It'll tell you, you know, you have to put that code in your import section, um, you know, as a dependency, so you have to import that button. Um, and then it even has a, a playground where you can, you know, enter some common parameters and stuff for that button. And it'll give you the code that you can just copy and paste into your component. So it's definitely worth going there and playing around with the playground. So you're not doing all this from scratch. You could also go to this link that I just sent to John that he'll open up real quick. Um, that mm -hmm. has this awesome tutorial on uh, how to to install some of those things specifically around like a button or if you wanted more information on kind of what we just went through. Um, there's this awesome blog that Ashley wrote um, that kind of goes <laughs> through it. <laughs> and she has a whole section around like modifying the index.js. Uh, um, so yeah, so definitely check that out. Um, like it, subscribe. Ashley does awesome cool stuff. So back to our component uh, yeah, so you, you put something. So if you actually go back to your browser where you had the, it should have just up. If you saved it, uh, it then it should have just updated it. So I got my browser window. Oh, is it in here? It was in here. Where did it go? Now I've lost it. <laughs> here we have this one. Yeah. Hey, what's that? So, so ServiceNow does hot reloading. So if you just modify it, you'll quickly be able to see it. So again, this is all local, um, and you know, quickly, most of us, most of the time was set for just setup. So you, we essentially talked about how you could set up globally your the now CLI, which I think is the the hardest to do, or the the project based one's the hardest to do. Then globally for the now CLI. And then, you know, if you want the easiest setup and you're okay with connecting it to your instance first, then um, setting up the, the binary is, is, the, is the route to go. Um, so I think we could stop sharing, John, um, and kind of end. Well, you know, I got to say, I want to do this again. I want to get Ashley back on here and do a part two. <laughs> mm. To actually like build something <laughs> instead of spending the entire time setting up. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully this. You can go through the playground and you know import some components and stuff in there. Yeah, and I wonder, John, if we could take like one of the problems or one of the things we've built in Portal, 
like for a client and then just see how far we can we can get in a component um, even yeah. if it's not reusable ideally your component should be reusable but if we could you know build something static that does some cool functions or does something that relates to service now i think that would be fun yeah yeah but now that I'm you're set up <laughs> <laughs> Now you can get a new computer and do this all over again. Yeah, yeah, I can say, oh, I broke it installing all ServiceNow stuff. I need a new one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I just want to say thank you so much, Ashley. Um, I oh, hope yeah. it was fun-ish. Hopefully you learned something too. <laughs> uh, I've learned that setting up dev instances of anything is just painful. Um, but this one is actually easier than I've seen in the past, like only an hour, right? We were able to get, you know, John set up. That's better. But we also knew what the issue well, was. Well, yeah, we had Morgan <laughs> and Ashley walking me through this. So for anyone normal, it's like a six hour process. I'm sure of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Google is your friend. The problem is, is this is so new that there's probably not a lot of Googling that's going to help you. Um, the developer courses are definitely the best bet on now learning. Um, if you do get stuck, they do have one on the now CLI that's different than the binary. Stick to the binary, get it connected to your dev instance, you'll save a lot of headache. Um, so, cool, all right, thanks.